Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation will be on Proposition 33 of Book 7. Now, in this proposition, we are starting with any number of numbers as we please, but in this example, it will be a triplet. So let's say we start with three numbers, a, b, and c, and they form a ratio of a to b to c. And we have a set of all numbers, or all triplets, that form this ratio, a, b, and c. And what we want to do is we want to find the smallest triplet, x, y, and z, that have the ratio of a, b, and c. So basically we're saying that there's a number x, y, and z that is in this set, and where the big X is the smallest of all the X's, the Y is the smallest of all the Y's, and the Z is the smallest of all the Z's, for all numbers X, Y, and Z that have the ratio A, B, and C. So that is our goal. So to do this, let's look at one method. All right, so if A, B, and C are all relatively prime, then by definition 21 of this book, A, B, and C is the least or are the least numbers that have the ratio of a, b, and c. So in that case, we're done. However, let's assume that a, b, and c are not relatively prime. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to find the greatest common divisor and we're going to label it d and we use the method in proposition three of this book. So d is the greatest common divisor of a, b, and c. And since D measures A, B, and C, let's create, um, draw the line segments E, F, and G such that E is the number of times that D measures A, F is the number of times that D measures B, and likewise G for how many times D measures C. According to Proposition 16 of this book, which is basically if X, time, x times y equals y times x. So we're going to invert this, and we're going to say that a is measured by e, d number of times, b is measured by f, d number of times, and c is measured by g, d number of times. So in other words, e measures a, one, two, three, four, five, six times, f measures b, one, two, three, four, five, six, and g measures c, six times. And by the definition 20 of same ratio, this is the definition of having the same ratio. So the ratio of a, b, and c is equal to the ratio e, f, and g. Again, that's by definition 20. And the statement or the proposition is that e, f, and g are the smallest numbers that have the ratio of a, b, and c. So we have found the smallest, and they are E, F, and G. But now we need to prove that these are indeed the smallest numbers. So we're going to prove that E, F, and G are the smallest numbers that create the ratio A, B, and C. We're going to do that by contradiction. So let us start off by assuming that we have three numbers, H, K, and L, where, a, where the ratio of H, K, and L is equal to the ratio of E, F, and G, which is the same as the ratio A, B, and C. And specifically, H is less than E, K is less than F, and L is less than G. So here is our assumption. So since H, K, and L are the same ratio of A, B, and C, there is a common number m that h is measured, h measures a m times, k measures b m times, and l measures c m times. And of course, this is again the definition of what it means to be an equivalent ratio. So we have h measures a, k measures b, l measures c, and they're all measured the same number of times, which is the number m. So let us create the letter M such that M times H is equal to A. 
Now, because the numbers h, k, and l measure the numbers a, b, and c according to the units in m, we can invert this again by proposition 16. So m times h equals h times m. So now we have that m measures a h number of times, m measures b k number of times, and m measures c l number of times. Therefore, m measures a, b, and c. So since a measures, or sorry, since m measures a, b, and c according to the units in m, specifically if we're looking at a, a times h, sorry, m times h is equal to a. So a is equal to m times h. a is also equal to d times e. So since a is equal to itself, d times e is equal to m times h. So we have this relationship here, which is true. If this is true, then according to proposition 19, the ratio of E to H will be equal to the ratio of M to D. So the ratio of E to H, which is 2, will be equal to the ratio of M to D, which is also 2 in this example. But E is greater than H. So if E is greater than H, M must be greater than D. So now we have that m is greater than d, but m measures a, b, and c. So m measures a, b, and c, and m is greater than d. Well, if m measures a, b, and c, and it's greater than d, then d cannot be the greatest common divisor, which is what we started off with. So this is where we have our contradiction. So our contradiction was because we came up with this original assumption. Here was our original assumption that brought us to our contradiction. So this original assumption cannot be true. There is no number h, k, and l, or no numbers h, k, and l, where h is less than e, and k is less than f, and l is less than g, that have the ratio of a, b, and c. So this is incorrect, and we are left with that e, f, and g are the least numbers that belong in the set of triplets that have the ratio of a, b, and c.